Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to the Shadows of Pygmalion. If you missed the last episode, you can click on the ad on top of the video to watch the previous episodes get caught up. Golden light sparkled in her hair. She breathed a long sigh which spun itself into an invisible spider's thread and floated toward the outside. What? She can move? Outside? As the thread entered the dolls in the mansion, it breathed life into them. Oh, uh, wait. Is she able to bring life to mannequins? Or lifeless beings? The dolls danced, sang, whispered, and laughed. Yang Li Feng looked at them with disbelief. Masako. Um. So she's able to bring stuff to life. We went to Ruka's room and opened the curtains. Light and the scent of roses overwhelmed her senses. In the crystal coffin, Ruka was moving. Ruka's eyes regarded her calmly. It felt as though Ruka's gaze pierced her, saw through her. With all the determination she could muster, she met Ruka's gaze. This What does that mean? Li Feng strained her back and looked proudly into Ruka's eyes. When Ruka spoke silently, bubbles of speech burst inside Li Feng's mind and she had to fight to retain, retain consciousness. Iwana? Ruka's gaze was frightfully powerful. Li Feng returned it as best she could. Iwana? Whoa. Dang it. Lying to Ruga would be meaningless. She could only tell her what she knew and wait her judgment. Resolutely, she answered. Wait, then this is rebellion? A violation of the laws of the world. Hmm. しかし、この process. She felt physical force pressing down on her eyes. Returning Ruka's gaze took a force of will. One moment of weakness and her eyes would be crushed by the weight. What does that mean? I have no idea what any of this stuff means! She answered without a hint of doubt. Light glared forth from Ruka's eyes, grew into silver threads which moved toward Li Fang. Through her two eyes, the threads entered her body. <laughs> Strained her body to remain motionless. The silver threads connected to her nerves and senses, probing the darkest depths of Li Fang's mind. Shining threads danced in her brain. Finally, the threads withdrew. Little tears of blood welled up deep inside Li Fang's eyes. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Like, wh I don't know what- what? She did everything to remain standing. Oh! The two animas right now she's speaking of is probably that Chinese woman, that Chinese dress, and the... 
be in Jessica, whoever that was before. I don't get it anymore. Grandma! Grandma! Is it these two? That's Anima? I don't know anymore. Ruka fell back into her coffin like a puppet whose strings were cut and leaf and collapsed to the floor. She was panting heavily and felt cold sweat on her skin. With great effort, she rose to her feet and walked to the coffin. Ruka looked like a dog again inside the coffin, eyes closed and quiet. Li Feng took Ruka's arms and folded them above her chest. Why would Li Feng lie about it? Wow, what was that? She turned around and stormed out of the room. The dog girl that had been lying disassembled on the atelier shelves were, was gone. An Eidos? Rico? Some of the threads were extending to different classes in Mina's school. Only one of the students could see them. The thread went directly over her table. During no emotion, she took a mechanical pencil and with the lead extended, prodded the thread. When the fluorescent lamps on the ceiling burst. She cracked a faint smile. So these threads might be like might be related to everything. Everything that's related to the string. So like when that girl touched it, it was connected probably to the light and then it broke it. So don't touch any of the strings unless you want it to be broken or or somehow you have powers to control them or something. I don't know. Some, things are getting interesting and kind of creepy and scary and dolls moving and everything. A blast wave washed over her skin and cracked the window glass. I was confused. I didn't remember the last few minutes. I had dreamt of being enveloped by a soothing white light of some such. Mina. So Rika? Who's Rika then? Huh? I touched my cheek and was taken aback. When I looked at it in a pocket mirror, I saw a small cut like from a razor blade. A thin trickle of blood began to appear. What do you mean am I okay? Did you just see that appear on me though? Koto offered me a small bandage. When I thanked her, I realized that the gloom hanging over my mind had been dispelled. I felt like the dirt sedimenting in my body had been swept away. A voice giggled, vaguely mocking me. So that's Rika then? I couldn't remember hearing the girl's voice before. I looked around but couldn't see anybody talking to me. It wasn't a real voice. Somehow I knew that. 
あごめんなんかちょっと寝ぼけてたみたいもうしっかりしてよ。The others around us laughed as well, spurred on by Makoto. Class is resumed. I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. Woo! Things are getting very, very weird now with dolls moving, being able to reanimate bodies and dolls and stuff, bring them to life. That's creepy and kind of spooky. Huh. But. We find out what's gonna what's going on then with with, with oh with Mina and, and hopefully we'll find out who Rika is in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye.